we're finally ready to start solving non-homogeneous linear differential equations. And in this video, we're going to introduce a technique called the method of undetermined coefficients. Essentially, in this method, we're going to guess the particular solution based off the general form of this g of x term. Now, in order for the method of undetermined coefficients to work, we're going to need a linear differential equation with constant coefficients. So let's get started with an easy example. Let's take a look at the example y double prime minus y prime minus 2y, all of that is equal to 8. Now the first step for the method of undetermined coefficients is actually just solve the homogeneous version of this differential equation. y double prime minus y prime minus 2y is equal to 0. Now we're pros at this by now, so we can do it really quickly. We know that the characteristic equation is r squared minus r minus 2 is equal to 0, or r minus 2 times r plus 1 is equal to 0, which means that our general solution to our homogeneous differential equation, or you could say our homogeneous solution, is just c1 e to the 2x, plus c2 e to the negative x. So, we found the homogeneous part. Now let's actually get started and wor start working on the particular solution. So we, let's try and guess a form of our particular solution based off the form of g of x. Well here, g of x is just 8. It's just a constant. So let's guess that our particular solution is also just a constant. Let's say a for now. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in this guess of our particular solution into this differential equation, and we're going to try and find a value for a that will satisfy this equation. So let's take the derivatives, y prime, that's derivative of a constant, that's just zero. Second derivative is also zero. And if we were to plug all of these values into this differential equation, we get 0 minus 0 minus 2 times a is equal to 8, which means a is equal to negative 4. But what was a? a was just our guess at a particular solution, which means yp is equal to negative 4 is a particular solution to this differential equation. So we found a homogeneous solution and we found a particular solution. So we can say that the general solution is equal to the sum of those two. c1 e to the 2x plus c2 e to the negative x minus 4. The sum of the homogeneous part and the particular part. So we found the general solution to this non-homogeneous differential equation. And I'll admit this example was fairly easy, but in all cases where you use the method of undetermined coefficients, you essentially use the same steps. The first is finding the homogeneous solution. The next is guessing a form of yp that somewhat matches or mimics g of x. The third step which we actually didn't do in this video, and we'll actually cover in later examples, is you have to make sure that the particular solution isn't already mentioned in the homogeneous solution. Make sure that these two solutions don't overlap at all. If they do, then you need to modify it. But if they don't, then you just proceed into the next step, which is just plug in your guess and try and find values for these undetermined coefficients that will satisfy this equation. So let's try another example, a slightly trickier example. Let's take a look at y double prime minus y prime minus 2y. All of that is equal to 4x squared. Now we first need to find the homogeneous solution. And if you notice, the left-hand side of this equation is actually the same left-hand side of the, as the previous equation. 
which means since the left hand sides are going to be the same, they're going to have the same homogeneous differential equation, which means they're going to have the same homogeneous solution. Namely, yh is equal to c1 e to the 2x plus c2 e to the negative x. So we found that. Now let's try and guess a particular solution. You may be thinking, well here our g of x term, that's just a constant times x squared. So you may be thinking, let's try just a constant times x squared. Now if we were to do this, we'd find that our first derivative is 2ax and our second derivative is 2a. Now, I'm not going to explicitly plug these in, but if we do plug these in, you can probably see that we're going to have a constant minus an x, something was an x term, minus 2 times something was an x squared, and all of that has to be equal to x squared. But that doesn't actually work out, because we have x terms, and we have constants on the left-hand side that aren't present on the right-hand side. So just doing ax squared won't cut it. We're going to have to modify this and just try maybe ax squared plus bx plus c. Now if this is our guess at a particular solution, then the first derivative will be 2ax plus b, and the second derivative will remain the same. Now if we're to plug these into our differential equation, we get that second derivative, 2a, minus the first derivative, 2ax plus b, minus 2 times y, ax squared plus bx plus c. All of that has to be equal to 4x squared. Now let's simplify this left-hand side by grouping all the x squared terms, the x terms, and the constants together. So if we group all the x squared terms, which is actually just this term, we get minus 2ax squared. Now let's group all the x terms, so plus x times minus 2a and negative 2 times b. Now let's group all the constants. Here we have 2a minus b minus 2c, and all of that has to be equal to 4x squared. Now to make this relationship more explicit, let's rewrite this right-hand side as 4x squared plus 0x plus 0. So in order for these two like sides to be equal, the coefficients in front of each term must be equal. So that means that the coefficient in front of the x squared terms must be equal, the coefficients in front of the x terms must be equal, and the constants must be equal. Which means that negative 2a has to be equal to 4. Which just means that a has to be equal to negative 2. Now let's compare the x terms. We get that negative 2a minus 2b is equal to 0. So if we plug in two, uh, the value for a, we get that 4 minus 2b is equal to 0, or b is just equal to 2. Now let's compare the constants. So 2a minus b minus 2c is equal to 0. Let's plug in a and b and get minus 4 minus 2 is equal to, let's just move this to the other side, adding 2c. So we get that negative 6 is equal to 2c, or that c is equal to negative 3. So we found the value of these undetermined coefficients, which means our particular solution will just be of the uh, just be ax squared, which is negative 2x squared, plus 2x minus 3. And there we have it, which means that our general solution is going to be c1 e to the 2x plus c2 e to the negative x minus 2x squared plus 2x 
minus 3. Now, the takeaway point for this example is if you have g of x, if, that, if that's just a polynomial term, like a constant times x to whatever power, it's just basically a polynomial, then your particular solution also has to be the general form of a polynomial that goes all the way up to like the degree you have listed. Which means, just to make that more clear, like, if, let's just make a quick table. If our g of x, if that's just a constant, let's just say c, then your yp should just also be a constant. If your g of x was just x, then your yp should be a polynomial that goes all the way up to degree 1, like ax squared, oops, sorry, like ax plus b. If your g of x is x squared, then your particular solution should be a polynomial going up to x squared, like ax squared plus bx plus c. If your g of x was x cubed, you could probably guess the particular solution ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, and so on and so forth. And you can see now, like, the reason why we have to include all these other terms are so that when we take the derivative, that they'll hopefully cancel out. Like, the reason why we included an x term and a constant in this particular solution is so that when we because when we take the derivatives, we get things with x's and constants. So we have to include these just to cancel, just to make sure that they cancel out at some point. So, that's the general idea if your g of x term is a polynomial-like term. We're going to continue this with, in the next video with different forms of g of x. So, I'll hopefully see you in the next video.